Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave and in this video we're going to start making some basic beats. So all I've done is I've opened a brand new Ableton Live set and I've deleted the extra tracks. So there was two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks, I've just got rid of them. And all I'm going to do is close some windows that we're not going to need to see for this just to keep things nice and simple. So we have a MIDI track and the first thing we want to do is we want to choose something to put on this MIDI track. So because it's a MIDI track it can only take MIDI instruments so if we want to place audio samples on it then we have to place a MIDI instrument that allows us to place audio samples so this in this case would be something like Simpler, Impulse or Drum Rack so that's going to act like an old school hardware sampler and it's going to allow us to add extra sounds or samples onto that so for example we'll go for Impulse and if we look we can actually see there's some presets in here so I'll just click through So these are going to have samples already preloaded into the slots. And we don't have to limit ourselves to impulse. What we could also do is go to drums and you can see we've got loads of either drum racks here or drum hits as well, which are just singular hits. So we've got the 808 and the 909 are very classic sounds. But in this case, we'll go back to the impulse for now and we'll go for Let's go for this 808. So we just pick this up and drag it into the MIDI track. And we can see this is what our impulse instrument looks like. And we have our pads. And we have a few features associated with each pad. So if I change this and click on another one, you can see that the settings update dynamically. So I'm not going to go too much into all the settings of this because that's going to get covered later on. All I want to do is get you making some beats. So what we can do is you see here we have our track, we have our clip slot. So this is clip slot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see this corresponds with our scenes here, which we'll get onto a little bit later. But it's how we can play our clips back when we've got lots of tracks. So all I have to do is I can either hit record here and I could either play something with my MIDI keyboard or my, even my computer keyboard as well if I have this button turned on up here. But in this case what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to create a clip on this clip slot. So I'm not actually recording yet, I've just created an empty clip. And we can see we've got a clip which is one bar long. This just gives us a bit of information about our clip because we're currently in clip view. I could also jump back to our device view. So I'm going to go into clip view just by clicking here. If I want a bit more space up here, if I've got lots of tracks, I can hide the browser. But I'll leave that open for now. And we can see we've got our sounds here and Ableton labels that for us, which is nice. Rather than having just a key style piano roll here, we can see what is on each key. And what we can do is we can press this button here. And this is going to allow us to audition the sounds. So the little blue headphone button is really important. And what we can now do And then likewise, I could also do that with my keyboard as well. So that's me pressing A on the keyboard. I can also change octave using the Z and the X keys. And you can see in the bottom left here, getting an update, seeing which octave I'm in. And we can go up again. And we can go up again. And you can also go down. So that's Z and X. Okay, so what we can do from here is we've got our one bar loop is we can just draw in some notes and we can either do that by clicking. So that's just a double click of the mouse and double click again to get rid of it. Or if I press B, you see we get this little pencil tool. I press B again, it goes away. I can also turn it on up here in the top right. And now I just need to single click and I can also click and drag. And if I press play now, I can press play using the space bar and you can see that this play button lights up. What this is doing is this is now playing uh, Ableton Live as a session view, but it's not actually playing at this clip yet. So what I can do is I either, I either press play and then I launch the clip or I just launch the clip and it knows to play session view as well. So let's do that.
and then we can put the metronome on. And we can press the space bar to stop again. Or we can also press stop at the bottom of the track here and this will stop this particular track from playing back. Or we can press stop here and this will stop all the scenes from playing back. And then likewise we can also do it up here as well which will stop the playback. So the metronome is handy because we can obviously make sure that we're on our downbeat because if we don't have a uh, something like a kick or whatever on our downbeat it can be easy to forget whereabouts we are with it. So let's now stick a kick on every beat and when we hover over these you can see we can drag them and we can also do this with shortcuts as well which we'll go through later on in the course. So we've got our four kicks, let's just play them and you see how it waited there just to show you again. If I hit the metronome we can hear we have our downbeat and when I press play on these clips it's not going to play until it hits this downbeat because we've got our quantization set to one bar and the reason this is is if we have a lot of clips we want to make sure that when we play them they're in time with each other so just to show you I'll play this out of time and it always hits back in in the downbeat or whatever we have this set to So let's play a few more sounds. What we can do is we can preview. So let's press B for the pencil tool. And I'll turn off our metronome because we don't need it anymore. And what we can also do is if I just drag this menu up, this is our velocity menu. We can start to change these notes so they're not all exactly the same. And we can either do that just by dragging here and you can hear it, it, uh, it plays back to let you know how loud it is. So you get some responsiveness. So we can drag a few of these down. And I'll just loop this little section up here and to change the loop length all you do is drag the bar at the top. And also just for a little bit of housekeeping this will stay the same colour as the clip so we can right click our clip and we can make it red or whatever colour we want. And we can even rename it to clip 1 or whatever we want to call it, basic beat. So let's just see how this sounds. And we can have a bit of fun with this and just keep playing with it, see what works. Another thing you can do is you can just hold down command and just drag down. And you can see that the actual notes here change colour to give an indication of what their velocity is depending on their shade of brightness. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can get rid of all of these notes here because we've now got something which works a little better. We can just select all of these by dragging and delete those. And we've got this which is working better. And we've got some generic shortcuts for Windows and Mac which I'll just quickly go through. So things such as Command and C to copy and Command and V to paste. So if I just select here and press Command and V now, I can paste. What I could also do is select all of these, hold down Alt, and I can just drag and drop. Or what I could also do is I could select all of these and just press Command and D, which is duplicate. So there's plenty of different ways of achieving the same result in Ableton Live. So we now have our entire sound. And this is when we can start to add in other things. So maybe we want to add in a snare underneath this clap and what I'm going to do is just pull it forward ever so slightly so that's a bit much so 
So that sounds good. And because I want to make sure that this value that I've set here, if I just zoom in, by the way, you can zoom in by just hovering up here and you get this magnifying glass and then you can just zoom in and out. So to make sure we get the same sort of shuffle value that we've set here, all I'm going to do is just drag along. So I've selected from here, you can see with this highlighted area, I've selected all along this highlighted area. So I know if I just press Command and D, it's copied it across and it's kept that extra bit of shuffle that I've added by dragging the note forward. And with dragging notes, you can see I can drag these fairly easily. You, they can also get them to snap. So if you are trying to drag it and it's snapping, then all you have to do is hold down Command and then it's going to slide around for you. So now that we've got this in place, what we can do is go back to our detail view and what we're going to do is just press play and we're going to have a look at a few of these settings just to see what we can come up with. So press play. I'm going to drag up the mixer as well just so we can see it a little bit better and get a better resolution of what's going on. Some things are getting a little bit loud so I'm just going to turn this down a tiny bit because it's always good to keep these green and not in the red like this. So this is bad. So what we have here is we have our different clip slots and we can see these were lighting up. So I'll just play them again. We've got some different buttons here. So we can solo and we can mute. And the only basic controls I really want to show you for now is how we can change the length of these sounds and how we can change the pitch of them. So to change the pitch, all we have to do is drag on the transposition. And this is just transposing up by five semitones. So that's five notes on the keyboard. So we can have a bit of a heavier kick by doing that. We could also soften the start if we wanted to. We can stretch it. So if we wanted a bit more of a punctual and percussive kick drum, we could use this. And then here we have the decay. So now it's only 156 milliseconds long. If we double click this, double click will return to default. So that's a really handy feature on any of these sort of knobs or controls. And if it doesn't work with a double click, then just right click and then you get the return to default. So what we can do is we can maybe tighten up our hats, stretch them. You know, we get a nice metallic sort of ringing. We could pan them to the left or the right. And then later on, we'll maybe learn how to automate this so we get a bit of movement. And then we've also got our volume here as well. Another thing we've got real quick is if we hover over, you see you get this little hot swap icon. And we've also got this up here as well. And this just lets us jump between different instruments or different sounds in the browser. So to, to demonstrate this, I'll go for the clap, uh, the snare, and it's now swapped that instrument out. So I'm going to go for the snare 707 in this case, so I just close down that hot swap. Okay, so in this video, we've made a very simple beat using Impulse. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to expand this out, maybe using other tracks and other scenes as well.